Yeah. Five minutes. Right. I'll tell him. It's time. I'm not done yet. I need a little bit more time. Please. Give me the card. Okay. Okay. Here's the card. Is everything on it? The full demo? Alright. We'll upload it as soon as possible. And make it publicly available. Hey, you think we're doing the right thing? Making it public like this? I don't know. But we'll all find out during the Steam Festival. Thank you for your hard work. We'll be in touch. Hey, I'm Pascal from Orange Pixel and my desk is a little bit wet, but that's not a problem. My demo is done, which means um, Residual is going to be part of that whole Steam Indie Game Festival thingy. And that's a good thing. That means a couple of things. Um, it's going to grab some more attention and hopefully build up wish lists. I hope Steam will find a, a place or a spot to feature Residual. Uh, it also creates awareness for my game. And you get to play the game if you're on PC and Windows or Linux. I'm not really sure how Mac OS works these days with uh, Steam. Not very well, I know that, but there are not many Mac OS gamers out there. So the game will be available for most of you. And that's a cool thing. It's also been a very weird process the last couple of weeks because I'm pretty much creating a game and tidying it up and making it user friendly even though there's still gonna be like a lot of stuff happening and adding and there's things missing, content is missing and it's, it's weird. For example, the crafting messages that you get would sometimes pop up uh, way before you even knew there was something you could craft or need at some point. Let's say you wanted to create an EMP type thing, for that you need item X, which you can find everywhere, but you also need a very rare item that you can't find everywhere and there was a big chance that you never saw it before and then suddenly that little robot that's hovering above you would just mention it out of the blue that if we combine these two things we might be able to craft this and that's a bit weird because that item is new and the robot shouldn't know about it the player doesn't know about it it made no sense and those things are very user-friendly little thingies that need fixing but usually i do that at the end of game development process not at the beginning which um, so these last couple of weeks it's been a weird process of game development now it might actually be a good thing i haven't decided on that just yet because it does mean pretty much i right now have a very stable version of the game a lot of these annoying things are working as they should and that's a good thing because i can focus on adding more content which is pretty much the end phase of a game when you actually are ready to release it then you can add a little bits of extra content here or there and that's what it feels like now i have a stable game a stable demo and i can add new content and new stuff to it which is a very different type of development process but so far i'm liking it i've also been tinkering with the inventory system and interface again this is the third time i think it's getting a complete redesign this time i based it on another indie game uh, onto the end which looks like a pretty cool game haven't played it but i haven't played a lot of games and i usually look at screenshots and other people playing just to get a sense or vibe of certain things and their inventory system uh, seems very spot on for their game so i try to mimic that a little bit in my game and i'm not really happy with it as it works in my game but it's a big improvement over what I had previously because the previous one was a very interfacey computer game type box showing up on your screen, which is fine for many games. But in this game, I want the player to really uh, be in the game and really not see the distraction of those type of things, but really feel more natural. And this current inventory does that, just not exactly how I want it. It's gonna probably gonna change again at some point for now. It works pretty well.
So I actually managed to add a few more things to the game, even though most of my work has been polishing and tweaking what's there and not adding new bugs. But these are the things that I thought was pretty safe to add to the game and so far no new bugs were created. So that's a good thing. One of those things is improving the sounds for the player. We now have uh, pushing and shoving sounds and hanging on ledges sounds and dropping down sounds and a lot of new sounds for the player. I also added a bunch of uh, debris and dirt and grit falling and those events are randomly happening around the level but they also happen if something big happens like an explosion or a old door opens up. There's now stuff happening and most of that was inspired by that Unreal uh, technology demo. If you haven't seen it, check it out, find it on YouTube. It's, it's impressive and it gave me a little bit of an inspiration for this debris and dirt falling stuff. I also added camera hints and this pretty much moves the camera to a certain spot in the game that needs your attention. For example, if you uh, pull the lever on a switch, a door might open just out of reach of the game screen. So the camera will pan to that door, the door opens and then the camera moves back to the player. Which I always think is, is awesome in adventure games and AAA games where they do those type of things and I wanted that in this game. So camera focus points are now in the game and very easy to implement. I did this in previous games as well. I think back to the Heroes of Loot days. So uh, it was very easy to implement and most of the code was there already. I just needed to activate it. I also added some new plant life to the game. Uh, one plant hangs on the ceiling and is a bit inspired by Half-Life as it uh, moves its tongue-like thing. Do plants have tongues? I don't know. It moves something down, trying to grab you and then pulls you up. And when you're up, it damages you a little bit. So some of the energy goes down and then it drops you again so you can move on. Because I don't want this uh, game to just have the player die a lot. I want the player to survive and be able to survive almost anything, except when you're not taking care of yourself or getting hurt too much, then you will die in this game. Besides that plant, I also added a glowing plant because I came to the conclusion that a lot of my tests, I was really annoyed about not having campfires or torches or not enough or the torch dying on me. And then I was there sitting in the dark then I had to craft a new campfire, a light the campfire, build or craft a new torch, find resources for it, light the torch. It was a very um, annoying process to just have light and see my surroundings. So there are now plants that glow in the dark and they will light up when you get near them and you can actually grab a stem from them and it will help you light your path for just a couple of minutes. So you don't need as much torches or campfires. Those are still very handy for getting rid of spider webs and, and critters and things like that. But there are now other sources for light in the darkness. And that's it, that, that's all of my list so far. Uh, most of my work has been finishing up the demo, make sure it's playable. You should be able to play it around June 9th, I think, on Steam. They're doing this whole game festival thing. I have no idea what it actually is, but they will be highlighting games like Residual and many other indie games. So um, we'll see what happens and um, I'm sure we'll do another video on it. But next week, I'm doing a video on the Switch uh, and the Meganoid coming to the Switch and another game coming to Switch because so much stuff has been happening the last couple of weeks. There are now two games coming to Switch and by the time that video goes live, who knows, there might be three games coming to Switch and two of those I've already have on my developer kit and they're fully playable, bug free. It's amazing. We've made such progress. It's going so fast and so rapid and it's pretty cool. So um, next week's video, we're going to talk about Switch and games and putting games on there and, and who I'm working with and why I'm working with him and, and how and how do we do it. And oh, I'm going to talk all about it. Oh, Switch next week. Tune in next week. But that's it for this video. Um, hope you liked it. Let me know in the comments below. If you have questions about the Switch stuff, also drop them below. I won't reply. I will just talk about them next week's video. 
So uh, you'll get your answer next week. So I'll see you next week. Bye. Into Google Radio. For it, it's raining. Who cares?